So last month, NASA announced officially that the Voyager 1 spacecraft, launched in 1977, had officially entered interstellar space. At 11.5 billion miles away from Earth, this is the farthest human-made object. Now, why is a probe the farthest human object in space? What's holding us back? Why aren't we going to deep space? Well, the answer is actually us, humans. The human body does not do well in prolonged periods of weightlessness, and in fact, humans experience about 1.5% bone loss per month in space. And if we can solve this fundamental problem, then it will truly open up the doors for deep space flight. And when I say deep space flight, it's kind of hard to imagine what it is, but I have some props here. So if I scale Earth down to the size of this quarter, the distance from Earth to the moon is about two and a half feet. Okay? If I want to go to Mars the same distance, the same scale, I'd have to go out the Serentine Center, past Eskimo Joe's, to Duck Street. If I wanted to go where Voyager is, I'd have to take the distance between this quarter and 25 miles away. So deep space is something that's so vast, even I can't comprehend it. So like, uh, like in the introduction, the Space Cowboys are a group of student uh, researchers that design experiments to fly and reduce gravity. Uh, and, and what our, our concepts revolve around is um, using inflatable technology to mitigate these problems that deep space travel presents. So we can rotate a spacecraft really slow to generate uh, an artificial gravity force that's similar to like we're walking around on Earth, just like in science fiction, although it's becoming more and more reality every day. So it's not your average airplane. Uh, it's called the Weightless Wonder, um, and some people watching are probably going to cringe when I say this, but it's more commonly known as the Vomit Comet. Um, <laughs> and the name holds true in, in most respects. Um, but we, we flew our experiment. Uh, this, I was fortunate enough to be involved uh, and, and flew uh, this past June. And our concept re revolves on these inflatables, right? And the reason why these inflatables are so great is that they weigh nothing compared to a traditional metal structure. And what we found was that the inflatables resisted about 10 times, 10 to 15 times its own mass. And when you compare that to current space structures, like the International Space Station that's orbiting around right now, it's only, it's only supporting about three times its own weight. And in space, everything is tied back to mass. If we can lower the mass, then the cost goes down. So the, the result was really profound, and it, it just gives us that, that push to keep on innovating. That's our theme this year. And the, the laboratory, the, the Weightless Wonder, is not your traditional airplane, like I said, and it's very easy to become focused, tunnel-visioned, and not realize what's actually happening. So my first flight was, it was very, it's hard to describe. I've tried to, to come up with a way to describe it for two weeks now, and I just, I, haven't, I don't have anything, really. Um, but my first flight, I was extremely focused on this experiment that I've been working on for a year. And then when I finally stepped back and realized that, oh, there is no ground beneath me right now, it's, it's, it's impossible to describe. It was awesome. I mean, it's one of the, one of the highlights of my life so far. Uh, and just the, the way that you become so used to walking around is just totally different without gravity. Uh, and it's, it's just really hard to describe. You start out kind of apprehensive, and then by the end, you're having the time of your life. And you can take even the NASA personnel. He's upside down. Um, and so it's kind of hard for me to describe to you what it's like. So I have a short video clip that I'd like to show. And this is one of our team members, Alyssa, who's floating around in zero G. And so Alyssa is perfect because she's small enough that she can float around pretty easily. Uh, the problems are really short. They're only about 10 to 15 seconds. And of course, she lands just like a cat right back on her feet. Um, and so the future is not far off at all. Um, future manned missions to deep space will be attempted. And it's really an honor for me to be a part of this type of research and contribute to the solution. And, and so, I, just like everyone else has challenged you, is just to think about what the future holds. And I'll end with a quote from um, one of the great astronomers and astrophysicists, Carl Sagan, who said that, we began as wanderers, and we are wanderers still. We have lingered long enough on the shores of the cosmic ocean. We are ready at last to set sail for the stars. Thank you.